gonna love it. The stuff turned out really good. What's going on everyone? I hope everybody's doing good today. Wow, it is just an awesome day out. It's sunny Friday afternoon and what better way to kick off the afternoon than a cold cider. So I told you I was gonna give you some updates and now we're basically in May. So the cider's ready and I'm gonna give you an update on it. So I'm gonna answer some of your questions for you guys and I'm gonna tell you what this stuff tastes like. Like seriously though, this is, yeah. No, we're not gonna drink much of that. That's it, you know, no more. <laughs> Tea's good. That'll be nice stuff to try. It'll be different, won't it? And that's when you know she's full. Too full. Woo! It's perfect. I love it. We're gonna get to work. Definitely whiskey. <laughs> Smells good. Yeah, and that's I'd, perfect. I'd say that thickness of this wall is probably a good inch. Yeah, yeah. Like that's got a, quite the side wall. And then if you can see guys too, that black, that's from, they actually burn all this in there. So that kind of gives it the, the flavor too, that charred burnt taste. Charcoal. Yeah. Excellent. This is gonna be our tap. Like it's gonna be a perfect fit too. Nice. containers it's kind of like this one still got to take this one out that's how that works then we got our bubbler up here and who do we got here a wild animal now that guy likes to drink cider too <laughs> and i'm not lying he like yeah <laughs> he's drinking it already <laughs> <laughs> like seriously though this is yeah no we're not gonna drink much of that that's it you know no more Yeah. 
How far do you get it down in? Well, that's the thing. It curls up on me. Oh, you can't keep it down? Down. Yeah. So it curls like that. What if I give you this end? Switch end. Or can we get this loop out? There. I think if I do that... You can have this end, which is straight. It should go right to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, but it's moving and curling too again. Super okay? That's looking better. Just staying down for you. I'll hold it in. She's looking good. Really tight. Nice. Yeah, that's a beautiful barrel. Oh, and the smell. Wow. Whiskey smell? Heavy duty. Rye, right, yeah. That'll be nice stuff to try. It'll be different, won't it? Yeah, you got it running good. So as you can see guys, we're just siphoning this out from this barrel into the barrel inside. And that's basically the process. We just fill it up here. And once the yeast comes in, we'll put the yeast in and seal it up. Just let it do its thing. Probably try it in January sometime. It'll be good, yeah. So yeah, you can see we're just draining this here. We got this little leak taken after here, and, and then we're filling up the far barrel there. So just an easy process, siphoning it, drinking a little bit of the juice while we uh, drain it. It's always the fun part and getting sticky hands. <laughs> Good times, fun process. It's always a fun part of the year to start making this again. What are you doing over there? Smelling? Yeah. It's going to be about perfect because yeah. if yeah. you get it up too high, then it just pushes everything over. Yeah. Yeah. Last one. That's beautiful juice. Oh. Boy, that's nice. That's going to be perfect, isn't it? If Romeo wouldn't have drank so much, it would be full. There we go. <laughs> had nothing to do with the hole in the barrel. <laughs> Hey, that looks pretty good, man. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you can see, guys. Let's take that off. So it's pretty much full. We're probably about two inches from the top. And that's just about perfect. You get it any more full than that, and it'll just... Just boil when it, it starts working, it. it'll just dump out anyway. So that's usually what you get left off. You don't want too much air in there. It can spoil your cider, but I've never had that happen, knock on wood. And I think we're gonna be okay. So this one's basically ready to go. All we do next is we put the top part on here, bung, and then our bubbler, which I broke. Try and put this on, didn't take much. So I gotta get another one. That goes in here. We put some water in here so no air can get back at it, but it does allow the gas to escape and this thing will start coming to life it'll bubble and that's it so this one's basically ready to go so since we're cleaning this barrel out thought it's more appropriate to have a little taste test here you can see how clear it is now it's been worked up a little bit here so it's a little bit hazy but it comes out clear once it sits now this is just flat so no carbonation so it's just nice clear drink and again it's a little cloudy right now because it's been moved around a little bit, but you can drink this flat or carbonated, whatever you desire. Cheers. Mm, yes. Excuse me. Thank you. Yep. Now this is last year's, so this has been sitting in the barrel basically 12 months and I've done nothing to stop the process and working. It's done its own thing. The barrel, if you keep it in there, it'll just keep at a nice temperature. Now the shop I usually have at about 15 degrees in here, so it's not overly warm and it doesn't get overly warm in the summer and it, it keeps in the barrel. Like literally just come out here whenever I want to drink or I'm having company over that wants to have some drinks. All I do is fill this glass up or one of these guys bring it inside and have a nice drink kills the thirst yeah it's a beautiful drink 
I highly recommend you guys trying it because it's something my dad was just saying, like a lot of people don't do this anymore, make their own hard apple cider. And I think probably people don't make it because A, they might not have an area for it. It's too expensive. Or where do I get my apples pressed? This guy that I got my apples pressed, that's what he does in the fall. He's pressing apples till the snow flies and then that's it. So you can get anything you want. If you want to add pear to your juice, last year I had uh, about 20 or 30 liters of pear in this juice. I had russets, couldn't get a hold of spies this year because the frost got nice. them late frost in the spring. You can kind of make it to however you want. There's no right or wrong and you'll love it. It's fun to make and I'm always excited to get these things working and trying the end result. So if you had a fruit cellar that you were able to get a barrel in, which the barrel that I just picked up, this whiskey barrel, this one you could definitely get through a doorway in a fruit cellar and that's probably where you'd want to keep it. But again, something cool, keep it at a nice temperature, consistent temperature that it's not going to get a lot of heat and you'll have beautiful cider. Homemade Canadian organic apples, good stuff. My barrel I've had for 12 to 13 years. It's still producing amazing cider and I'm going to get that siphoning into this barrel. So I'm going to show you how I do this. So I'm going to get all this fresh juice into here. It's 230 liters this one compared to 200 liters. So you can see the difference in size. Width is a lot more on this one and the length is the same. And this one's definitely a little bit taller as well. The stand is a little bit smaller. I don't know if you can see that. So, but yeah, if you're ever uh, wanting to do this and you want a stand basically pretty simple just your post a little cutout for the arch for the barrel which actually my dad made this so dad when you're watching this thank you you did make this one a long time ago and you gave it to me once I started making this stuff so I'm gonna get a little bit of a drink here to get this siphoning going and get this one going So I don't know if you've ever siphoned before. It's pretty simple. You just basically act like this is a straw once it's going. Once you literally get a mouthful or close to that, it'll just keep continually running until the top of the hose hits air and then it'll stop. So we're gonna get this going. Once that's got down quite a bit on the barrel, then we will put pails of it in again and that'll be it. That's it, simple as that. We'll let that run. You can hear it. Simple as that. No pump, just a little bit of a siphon. It's really easy and affordable to make. 200 bucks a barrel basically. And this stuff lasts me over a year, even giving all the stuff away. I, I mean, I don't drink much at all. So it's not gonna taste like the ones in the LCBO. I'm gonna say if you're gonna compare to something in the LCBO, you wanna get something as natural as can be without sugars, because then you're gonna get the real cider taste. You want a real good cider taste. I mean, like a good apple-y tasting cider that isn't overdone with sugar sugar and all these other crazy things they put in these drinks and then decide if you're going to make that because that's what it's going to be close to it's it's really natural and really good and it's not bad for you either a lot better than drinking all the other stuff so yeah this is what i've have all bottled so far this is last year's that i just finished off so this will keep us going and all my company when guests when they come over Perfect. It's so gutter cider here. So good. So I'm going to answer some of the questions because I did get a fair amount of questions on the cider video and a lot of people were asking me all kinds of stuff. What it tastes like, where do I get my yeast from, where do I get the cider from, all kinds of things like that. So. First question here, do you keep it in the barrel or do you bottle it all? Now that's a good question because that's a 230 liter barrel. So I have 90 bottles, which is 500 ml per bottle. So two five gallon pails roughly enough to bottle. So basically that's what I do. I bottle the Grosch bottles. I put one teaspoon of dextrose in each bottle. Or what I do is I mix up two five gallon pails, basically pour the cider that's been fermenting and is ready this stuff you can see 
put that in a five gallon pail. I put the amount of dextrose that needs to be in there and then give it a good stir. And then I put a funnel in all the bottles, fill them all up, cap them, let them sit for a couple weeks, carbonate, and then you got the bubbly stuff, which just adds that kind of fine champagne sparkling. I don't know, it just gives it a life. I, I, I like it flat. I like it with carbonation. It tastes good both ways, but I do like it the carbonated way. So I can keep it in the barrel all year long. It will stay fine. It does change taste. I find it just kind of gets a weaker apple taste. It kind of just gets smoother and smoother. It's hard to say. So yeah, you can keep it in the barrel as long as it's kind of in a cool, dry space and it won't go bad. I've never had a problem like that and I've done this for 13, 14 years now and never had, had anything go bad. Another person asked, where can I get fresh cider? So I've known this farmer for quite a few years. He's outside of Waterloo. He presses juice full time. There's another guy out uh, towards Alora. So if you're in Southwestern Ontario and you're watching this video and you kind of wanted to know where the heck I got this, those are kind of the places I order, get it and put it in the barrel, walk away. And then when it's ready, um, another person asks, is it pasteurized or non-pasteurized? So when you make hard apple cider, it has to be non-pasteurized. So it's basically just the apples pressed and put into your plastic barrel so you can transport it home and then put in wood barrel and that's it. So don't get pasteurized. That means that it's boiled and if you put that stuff in, it's not going to ferment at all. Do you notice a difference in flavor between the wine and whiskey barrel so as you know my barrel is a wine barrel i've had it for like 13 years i noticed the difference between taste of the wine barrel when i like initially started i didn't like it at all it probably took a year to two years to kind of get that flavor out i would highly suggest if you're looking to make your cider and you want to get into this i would suggest getting a wet rye barrel or a whiskey barrel that that's good and will hold cider it's got a great taste between my dad's and mine right now, I kind of like the whiskey barrel better. It does have a little bit more kick to it. Whiskey barrel does give it a little bit different flavor, but you can't go wrong either way. I would lean towards a wet rye barrel if you can get your hands on one. What other fruits work well with the cider or can be mixed with the apples? In other years, I've put pear in, russet, delicious apples. I've kind of put a mix a match in. I haven't experimented with too much. I've put oranges I put lemons in that's kind of what my dad likes putting in his so in 230 liters I will put probably 20 to 30 liters of pear in and I'll put 20 to 30 liters of spy a spy apples have tartness to it I think that's kind of where the cider kind of gets its dryness some people say this tastes a little dry so you kind of pucker up when you drink it I guess if that's a good way of explaining it I mean you can put a lot of things in it I think you could put cherries in it like black cherries maybe I don't know just kind of have fun with it experiment with it but I mean if you're doing a big batch maybe don't experiment too crazy because that's a lot of cider if you don't like it so I kind of liked experimenting but uh, with like small amounts or just like knowing kind of what I like and I kind of keep it at that how do you care for your barrel do you clean it out like basically all the yeast that's in there do you sanitize with sulfur to be honest the barrel always keep liquid in there so if you drain the barrel and you've bottled all your cider that came from the barrel I would probably put water back in or you can even put whiskey like you can take a 60 of whiskey and put it in there and just let it sit all summer long until the fall and you're good to go but don't let your barrel dry out because it'll open up all those joints on the oak barrel will literally open up and your barrel will be shot for cleaning in the fall I basically dump it upside down take the bung out of the top shoot a garden hose in there water clean it all out you can even drop a chain in there roll the barrel around with the chain to get all the grip but honestly it comes out super clean nothing stuck to the side i don't use any sulfur sanitize anything it yeah it's 
pretty foolproof like you, you can't really go wrong so that's kind of what i do for cleaning clean it out with water i do clean all the bung and the bubbler the spigot all that stuff and soap and water clean it well rinse it well put it all back on put your cider back in let it ferment and so on so that's how i care for my barrel is there a difference between cider and hard cider the difference between cider and hard cider is cider that's just been pressed has no alcohol in it and and hard cider is this stuff. It's alcohol, it's fermented, it's the good stuff. What does it taste like? Is it tart? Is it dry? So yeah, the taste is kind of tart. It's kind of dry, but I think that's kind of going back into carbonating it. I would carbonate it. It kind of just takes that flatness away. Some people actually prefer it flat and, and no carbonation like I'm drinking right now. And I, I don't mind it. Maybe it's just because I'm used to it. But the carbonation does add that like kind of rich element to it, like that fine champagne and that nice bubbly a nice little sparkle in your mouth or popping of the fizz and everything. So it does add another element to it. I do highly recommend carbonating. And how strong is the alcohol approximately? And I would think I'm in between 10 to 18%, somewhere around there for sure. It's got some kick to it. Like you definitely need to watch it. And it's kind of one of those drinks that you can like sit there and you can drink and it's going down smooth. You don't feel any bloating. You don't feel any anything until you actually decide to get up and you're like, whoa, I've had two little cups of this and uh, I can feel it. It's kind of a different buzz, if I should say that. It's definitely totally different. It's hard to explain. It does kick you in the butt pretty good. So basically, guys, that's all my questions. I had one other one. And what kind of yeast do you use? So this is the one that I got here. And it's for specifically apple cider. A lot of guys will use champagne yeast and I've had a lot of success with champagne yeast or you can find one for cider as well. So those are the two ones that I would recommend for using to make your cider. You can't go wrong. It's awesome. 100 bucks for the barrel, 200 bucks for the juice or you got your own trees, get your own apples pressed and you got 100 bucks for the barrel and that's a pretty sweet deal. Plus you got some nice alcohol that you can give away for gifts, drink yourself, drink with your spouse but make it guys it's definitely fun i look forward to it every fall and i look forward to it every summer because it's a nice cold refreshing drink a little bit of tartness but it goes down really nice so guys i hope that answered your questions i hope you're all doing good i'm so sorry it's been so long business has been crazy busy which is good keeps me hopping but i promise i will be dropping more videos and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up give it a like share it with somebody that wants to make some cider I'd appreciate it. Stay tuned. Stay hydrated. We'll see you on the next one. See ya. What are you doing over there? Smelling? Yeah. Okay. yeah. You can grab that camera and just show what you're doing then. It's on. Show me. You can tell. Had a few sips. Got some good percentage. It's been a long day. So hope that helps you. Over. It'd be better if you pay attention. Pay attention. I get lost stress in the bay. I can't just stay around. I gotta go, I gotta build up and glow Gotta be shining like gold